Yes, Lord. That is our prayer this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. Each one of us, Lord, as we stand here, we declare to you that, yes, Lord, our hearts we give to you. Yes. Everything that is inside us, oh God, everything, mighty God, that you are going to do in this place, mighty God, we surrender to you, oh God, and we say, have your way. We say, Lord, take control, take preeminence of everything. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we exhort you. Yes, Lord. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I want us to turn our Bibles to uh, the book of Revelation, chapter number 3. I'm going to read from verse 7 up to verse 8. Revelation, chapter number 3, verse 7 up to verse 8. The Bible says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have, have, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Hallelujah. I just want to talk about a moment of an open door. A moment of an open door. I realize that uh, several times we enjoy things that we see or things that God has given us. We appreciate all the good things that happen in our lives and we enjoy all those things. And sometimes we suddenly just see that that door that we have been enjoying those good things suddenly just closes. And I want you to know that when such kind of a situation happens, it's very devastating. It's very confusing. Sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't know where to run to. You don't know who to ask. Because the door where you were actually focusing has been closed. Hallelujah. As I stand here to share this word, I'm actually talking about most of the things that I have seen happen in my life. Whereas as I look at things happening, I, I, I enjoy this that God is doing in my life. And all of a sudden that door just closes. And I'm going to uh, just emphasize on those things. So we're talking about a moment of an open door. Because 
I believe that whenever there is a closed door, somehow there is an open door coming. Hallelujah. Whenever there is a closed door, there is an open door that is coming somehow. Now, the Bible says, these words comes from he that is holy and he that is true. Now, Revelation brings out something that is very interesting and each one of us, or, uh, if, if, if anything I've seen in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the newsletter today, somebody was testifying about the open door. Now, Revelation brings out something that is very interesting. Mentions, begins to mention about an open door, but before going into the details of an open door, talks about these words are coming from he that is holy and he that is true. In other words, the God that we serve is a true God. The God that we serve is holy. What does that mean? It means that you can stand on the things that God says and you will not be let down. You cannot be disappointed of the promises of God. So if God says, I will bless you, that's what he's going to do. Now, if man tells you today that I'm going to bless you, chances are that man is able to change. Chances are that man will be able to disappoint you. But the Bible says, these words are said by he that is holy and he that is true. So if God is holy, then we are talking about the just God. We are talking about the pure God, full of purity. And when we talk about the God that is true, we are saying we can rely on him. He's reliable. He's dependable. Whatever he has promised you, maybe through the word that has been preached, maybe by your study, your personal study, you have seen something God mentions about you. You have to understand that God is reliable. Hallelujah. He can never fail and he will never let us down. I came to announce to somebody this morning that in whatever situation that you are going through, the God that we serve is faithful. Hallelujah. The God that we serve is faithful. Sometimes you look at your situation and you think uh, nobody cares. Sometimes you look at things that is happening in your life and you begin to think that you are all by yourself. But I want you to know that our God is reliable. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, these words are said by he that is true and he that is holy. And it says he has the keys of David. Now, the keys of David, the Bible is actually talking about the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we, as we are seated here, we are children of the kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God. As uh, uh, the, the song was sung where we said, Jesus, we have found you. The moment that we found Jesus, we became a part of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, he has the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, when we talk about the keys, we are saying a key is some, something that affords access or means of access. Keys is something that affords the means of access. In other words, when you have the keys, even if it's somebody's house, you begin to act like it's your house. Hallelujah. So when we talk about keys, we are talking about authority. We are talking about control. We are talking about ownership. If the Bible says he has the keys of the kingdom, he has the keys of everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. He has the keys of everything that concerns your life. So if, you're, if a door crosses over you, then you know that the God that we serve has the keys over the door that has been crossed. Or if that door that has been crossed needs not to open, he is able to open another door. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So everything on this earth belongs to the Lord and includes you. Hallelujah. So everything belongs to God. He has the keys. He has the authority. He has the power. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say he has the power over your life. He has power over your life. 
Everything that concerns you, he has power over that. So when we talk about authority, we actually, we talk about the key, we are talking about authority control. God is in control. Somebody sang a song in Zambia and said, relax, Jehovah is in control. Hallelujah. Relax, Jehovah is in control. He has control of everything. Sometimes we look at situations and we feel, wow, this is out of control. But even when a situation is out of control, God is in control. Hallelujah. We talk about ownership. Not only does he own everything around us, but he owns us also. Hallelujah. So the Bible says when he closes the door, no one can open. When he closes the door, no one can open. Now, every door that has not been sanctioned by God is going to be closed. Sometimes we find ourselves trying to force certain doors open. We try to make our own efforts to see certain doors open. But every door that has not been opened by God is going to be shut. Because God will, will cross those doors that he has not opened in order for him to open the doors that he knows that they are going to benefit our lives. Hallelujah. And in every situation that we encounter, when a door closes, you need to understand that there is something, there is a purpose why God has closed the door. There is something that God wants to, uh, uh, to, to achieve or to fulfill in closing that door. I remember one time, somebody came to me back in Namibia and uh, said, oh, pastor, I found somebody to marry. Said, oh, that's interesting. So when I did an investigation, I found that the person was not born again. And I said, well, this cannot happen. It cannot work. And uh, felt I was against, left the church, went somewhere else. And uh, eventually, when the guy was caught uh, committing a, 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 a sexual sin, she came back crying. Because those that we open by our own selves, as long as they are not sanctioned by God, they close. Sometimes we want to force God's hand. We want to force God into something. So as long as God is not in it, it is not going to work. No matter how you try. That's why you find that some people are sitting on the, the closed door. The door that has been closed and they are crying and they are beating themselves, hoping that that door is going to open. It's not going to open. Because remember what I said, he is true, he is holy. So if he says, I close, then he closes and that's true. Hallelujah. God, God shuts some doors because he is busy opening other doors for your life. It does not mean that when a door closes, that's the end of your world. Hallelujah. It does not mean that when the door closes, then you are finished. God closes certain doors because he's about to open another door for your life. Hallelujah. And then he says, when he opens, no one can shut. When God opens the door, nobody can cross, child of God. Nobody can cross. Can I announce to you that if it is God that gave you that marriage, that marriage is going to stay. Hallelujah. Whether the devil likes it or not, as long as God opened, it's going to remain. Hallelujah. If it is God that gave you that job, it is going to remain. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we need to understand that when God opens, it becomes permanent. Amen. He only crosses when he sees fit that it is time for you to move from position A to position B. So as long as God has not spoken, I remain steadfast where God has planted me. So I would say it is not over until God says it is over. I am not finished until God says I am finished. So a position or my standing does not depend on what people say or what people think about me. It depends on the one that opens the door over my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is not what your boss says. It is not what your parents are saying about you. It is what God says because he's the one that opened that door. I come from Africa and in Africa there is so much witchcraft. I, I don't care what the witches think or do. As long as God positioned me where I am positioned, nobody is going to uproot me.
As long as God has planted you, no matter how they fight you, no matter how they intimidate you, they will not move you. Are you getting what I'm saying? God is faithful. Hallelujah. When one door closes, another opens. But we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which has opened. Many times the door has closed. You sit. You pity yourself. I have seen some people. I don't know if it happens in Singapore, but it happens where I come from. People who go to church because they've got some problems in their lives, so they'll make sure that they put up that sad face so that people can pity them. Now, you see, the bad news is I can feel sorry for you, but I can do nothing for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll feel so, so it doesn't help for you to come, you, have, you fold your hands all over your body and, uh, you know, look as, uh, like the saddest person on earth. It does not help. So we'll pity you, we'll feel sorry for you, but your trust must be in the Lord. Hallelujah. So many times we, we sit in front of this door that has been closed and we are so sad, looking so, so sorrowful in front of this closed door. We forget to open our eyes to see the door that has been opened. Hallelujah. How difficult is your situation? How difficult is your situation? I don't know what you are going through, child of God. I don't know what is happening in your life. But all I just came is to ask you a question. How difficult is your situation? In Mark 16, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says, when Jesus died and then he was buried, the women went to anoint his body, and on their way, they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Hallelujah. Sometimes we ask ourselves, who is going to help me? Who is going to come through for me? Who is going to deliver me? I came to announce to you that the one that died and rose again, the one that died and rose again is able to roll that stone away of your life. Hallelujah. So that big situation that you are talking about, God is able to deal with it. Several times, we spend most of our time trying to magnify our problems. Amen. We magnify, oh, I've got a very, 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 very big problem. So we magnify our problems and we make God look so small. Hallelujah. We make God look so small. May our trust be in God. Just the time that I've been uh, here in uh, uh, Singapore, I've gone through a lot of things. A lot of things have, it has happened just in three months. A lot of things have happened back home. But through and through, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. Whenever things were difficult, I went to the brothers. I went to the sisters. I shared, oh, I'm going through some stuff. Can you pray with me? They prayed, and God has been coming through. Amen. So let's not sit and begin to pity ourselves and look at the problems that we have and think like we are, the, we are the people that have the most problems on the earth. God is faithful. Who is going to remove this situation from your life? God is. God is able. He's able to remove that situation. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 5. To 10, the Bible says, I'm just going to read, I think, one verse or so. For a great and effectual door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. These were the words that the Apostle Paul had said. A door, a great door has been opened. A door has been opened, but there are many adversaries. Other versions say, uh, uh, there are so many adversaries and I see a door open. Hallelujah. Can I announce to you that the problems and problems that we see in our lives, they are not there to destroy us, but they are there to create an opportunity for you to see a door open. So the Apostle Paul says, 
are in the problems that I am going through. In these difficulties that I am encountering in my life, I have seen an opportunity for the open door. Hallelujah. When I moved into, into Namibia, Namibia particularly is a country, they don't like so much foreigners. So when I came in from Zambia into Namibia, I started a church, and uh, within, uh, I think, uh, the same week that we launched the church, Sister Sharon came and visited the church, and uh, within about one month, we were almost 100 people. So a lot of people were coming to church, and uh, every day the, ch the church doors were open. We were having services every day. We met every 6 o'clock. We began to preach the word of God, pray for the sick, deliver people from, from witchcraft and all sorts of things. One little girl came. It was about 12 years. This girl was involved in witchcraft. She was initiated in witchcraft. Comes with uh, the, the, the stuff that they use in witchcraft and uh, brought them in the church. We prayed for her and took those things and bent them and put fire on them. And then the following day, I was back home because the meetings were only happening in the evening. So during the day, I got a phone call that there is fire at the church. So I went, uh, I rushed to the church. When I arrived, I found there was a great gathering of people. And people were threatening to stone me for destroying something that was a family inheritance. Because that witchcraft was an inheritance from the father to that child. So we, they had brought a witch doctor and uh, just trying to confuse, to bring confusion at the church. So what happened was uh, the only way that we could find safety was for us to seek peace with these people, to sit and understand what is going on. But they, yeah, the situation became out of hand that uh, the police came in and they took me. Okay, now I'm a foreigner, just arrived in the country and already I'm in trouble. So they took me, and uh, what was quickly coming into my mind was I'm going to be deported. I'm going to be sent back to, to Zambia. But in that situation, while I was taken, I began to feel inside me that this is an opportunity. I'm arrested for the gospel's sake. I'm taken for Jesus. This is powerful. So as I was there at the police station, I'm seated, and uh, they're interrogating me, asking me, why did I destroy those things? I said, well, I, I, I didn't go into their house to destroy them. They brought them into the church. So I destroyed them in the church. So when I said that, the police said, well, that is quite interesting. So you, you actually do that. You, that's how you do your deliverance. You destroy people's things. I said, yes. If it is for witchcraft, we destroy them. Hallelujah. Well, the, 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 the police realized that uh, we had uh, uh, the good case because I was in my premise. So whatever I did in my premise, that's how I do it. So they said, fine, you can go, Pastor. Now, you know, the good news is, where is the opportunity here? The opportunity is, the same police officer that was interrogating me I had an opportunity to share Jesus Christ to him. Hallelujah. I shared Jesus to him, and he's one of my good friends. And I have, seen, I have seen so many police officers surrender to Jesus and come to church. Hallelujah. So when we see a situation, we just see a police officer, we see handcuffs. And we feel, oh, I'm finished, I'm in jail. There, there is an opportunity. That's why the Apostle Paul says, there is a problem here. There is an adversary here. But I see an opportunity. May you see an opportunity in whatever situation that you are going through. May you see an opportunity. May you see God in that situation that you are going through. Is it a financial problem? May you see God. Is it a marital problem? May you see God. Is it a job problem? May you see God. Because in that situation, God is able to show himself strong. Hallelujah. So when we go through difficult times, we must envision opportunities to see an open door. Begin to see an open door. I see this door has closed, but God, what is, going, what is happening? Where is the next door opening? God is able. Hallelujah. Now, there is something that, that I call the master key. The Bible says Jesus has the keys to the kingdom. He has the keys of the kingdom. Now, he speaks, he turns to the disciples. If you read uh, 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 in, in, in Matthew chapter number 16, Verse 19, he, he speaks to the, to the disciples and he says, I have given you the keys. Amen. 
I have given you the keys. And then he says, whatever you bind on earth shall what? Shall be bound. Whatever you loose shall be loosed. Do you know that you have the power to open or close? Because he has given you authority. I'll talk about that later. Now, what are these keys? Because when we talk about, when we talk about an open door, particularly where I come from, when we talk about an open door, people get excited because even when you are just preaching, people begin to, to visualize doors. They see money. They see jobs. They see all this and that. But there are certain things that you need to understand before you can get too excited. Hallelujah. And one of those things is, the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. I know your works. And that is very cardinal. I know your works. So whatever you have been doing, some of you have been so committed to the work of God. Some of you have gone for missions and some of you are yet to go for missions. And I want you to know that whatever you have been doing, God is not ignorant about what you are doing. God is not ignorant about the efforts and the commitments that you are doing. Because most of the times when things are difficult, we begin to ask ourselves, I've been so faithful. I've worked so hard. I've served the Lord faithfully. But why are things happening like this? The Bible says, I know your works. I know what you are doing. I know how committed you have been to the work of God. Now, when we talk about knowing your works, you need to understand that we are talking about your relationship with the Lord. Your relationship with the Lord matters. Sometimes we get carried away to have a relationship with God because of the group when we are with other people. Some people, when they are with other people, they are strong Christians. And when they are on their own, they are very bad Christians. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that when we talk about relationship with the Lord, we are talking about personal relationship. Personal relationship. How do you relate with the Lord? Do you know God? Do you only know God in songs? It's very easy to sing how you know, how you love Jesus. There are those songs we used to sing in Sunday school. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. But you need to understand that it comes, it comes down from a song. It comes down from the group and it circles on you as an individual. Do I know God? How is my relationship with God? You want a door to open over your life? Check your relationship with God. How is your relationship with God? Do you know him? I mentioned about the commitment also in the house of God. How committed are you to the work of God? How committed are you? When programs in the church come up, when activities come up in the church, do you think, do you feel it's a bother? Do you have maybe other precious things that you feel you want to do and not do the work of God? You need to understand that David spoke about the fa how God favored his life. In fact, if you read uh, 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 Psalms 37 verse 25, there's a script, the verse that says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed or his children begging. I was young and now I am old. I have never seen a righteous person forsaken. So you need to, uh, uh, and when you look at the things that David wrote, David wrote so much about the house of God. He had a good relationship with God, but he also had a very good connection with the house of God. You see in uh, 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 Psalm, Psalms 23, it says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Some people in Africa, I don't know if it happens here, Pastor. In Africa, what happens, people will come in, the, in church, join the church, and they have a backup plan. Especially those people that transfer growth, move from another church, and they, go to, they come to the church. When they are, when they are provoked or when, some, when they are rebuked, they pack their things and go. Because they already have a backup plan. If I have a problem in this church, I'll go and join another church. But when you look at David, he writes things like, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, I'm connected. Hallelujah. He says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. How many people are glad to be in the house of God? Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of God? 
So if you're happy to be in the house of God, you need to bring yourself to a place where you connect with the house of God. You connect in the house of God. You are not here in the house of God as a passenger, but you are here because you know that there is something that God is doing in my life through this church. Hallelujah. And, you, and, and then the third thing is your personal devotion is also important. How do you spend your time with God? It's very important. Nowadays, relationships are being affected. Relationships that are supposed to be in direct communication, they've ended up in being indirect communication because there's been too much social networks that have come up. So rather, if I cannot talk to my wife, I would rather talk to her on Facebook. Uh, one man was not in talking terms with the wife and writes a note to the wife. Wake me up at 6 o'clock. I have to go for work. And he puts it on the table and goes to sleep. When the wife woke up, she also got a pen and wrote, wake up, it's time to go for work. And she puts it there. And the man woke up at 9 o'clock. So what happened now? You want to talk now? Because you didn't want to talk. So you need to understand that communication is very important. The, the, the time that we spend in the presence of God is very important. We must have a relationship with God where we can go in the presence of God. This has nothing to do with the next person. It has nothing to do with who you and God. You spend time, study the word of God, pray, communicate with God. I have seen people that, I don't know if God has a Facebook account. I don't know if you, please, if you know it, you can add me to, to that account. Why am I saying this? Because I've seen people put on their profile and say, oh God, I need help. So they, they write a message. Because when you put on Facebook, you are writing to your friends. So people write on Facebook and say, oh God, I need money. Okay, you need money, so God is going to come on Facebook and respond to you. You understand? So people have shifted from spending time to pray, to be in the presence of God, and then they are spending time to write things to God on Facebook. So the, the communication, the relationship with God is being affected because of social network. Facebook is good. I'm there on Facebook. Our church is also on Facebook. But be careful with Facebook. It can fake your life. Fake book. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible says, Behold, I have set before you an open door. I have set before you an open door. Now that is very interesting. When you look at this particular verse, it says, Behold. Behold means open your eyes and see. The problem is you're, you are busy crying yourself out. You're, you're high, your face is down. You are so discouraged. You are so downcast. And the Bible says, lift your eyes and see. Behold means see. I have said before you an open door. You know why you are sitting behind a, a closed door? Because you, are, you cannot see. You cannot lift your eyes and see what God is doing. Behold. Open your eyes and see that which God is doing. Hallelujah. I have said before you, not behind you. I have said before you, not behind you. Whatever is behind, leave it in the past. And begin to focus on the things that God is doing. You know what the problem is? We are so much connected to the past in such a way that we do not want to let go and carry on with what God is doing. I had one person say, I want to end my life. And I said, why do you want to end your life? He says, because this was in a relationship with somebody. This relationship was my everything. So now this person has cut the relationship off, so I am finished. I said, you are not finished. The problem is, you are still connected to your past. Cut loose from the past and connect with what God is doing. I have said before you, the Bible does not say I have said behind you. I have said before you. The Bible says, one thing that I do is forget the past and pursue what is ahead of me. Hallelujah. May you look forward. May you look ahead. May you forge, forge on. Amen. And then he says, you have kept my word. Whatever is born out of the word of God shall be sustained by the word of God. Whatever has been born by the word shall be sustained by the word. May you be planted in the word of God. May you be strong in the word of God. You see, there is uh, what we call studying of the word of God and nibbling scriptures. And that's where the problem is. Because people can quote scriptures out of proportion. Nibbling scriptures because 
they, they, they do not have the word inside them. Hallelujah. So it says, you have kept my word. May you keep the word of God. Because the word of God in you is what is going to sustain you when situations are difficult. There are some scriptures that I have put in my heart. And when I have a difficult situation, those scriptures begin to come alive. They begin to surface in my spirit. And I begin to quote them. I begin to pray. I begin to mention those scriptures. Hallelujah. You have not denied my name. Now, what is your position? And I'm closing with this. Your position is, when your door has been closed, your position is, handle with prayer. Many times we want to handle with care. But it's very important to handle with prayer. How much do you pray? When I talk about prayer, I'm not talking about popcorn prayers. Uh, because it's very easy to pray popcorn prayers where people just pop prayers. But I'm talking about deliberately you go into the presence of God and begin to seek the face of God. Handle with prayer, whatever situation, sometimes, I don't know if it happens in Singapore, but sometimes what people do, they feel more comfortable to share with somebody whatever situation they are going through, and they find it very difficult to share with the Lord. Sometimes we end up just sharing with people, and we don't mention it to the Lord. Handle with prayer, whatever situation that you are going through, handle with prayer. That's why the Bible says, whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you loose shall be loosed. That's what it says. So it means, it doesn't say whatever you share to somebody. Whatever you bind, so you yourself must do the work. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I want you to pray, for me, to pray and fast for me. I said, what is the problem? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going through some problems and I want you to pray and fast for me. And I said, and what will you be doing? Hallelujah. While I'm praying and fasting for you, you, you are eating me, I'm praying and fast. It's not fair. Hallelujah. You understand? These are things that happen in the house of God. People come to you, they give you assignments, and they are doing nothing about it. Now, let me tell you, pastors are not prayer machines. Amen. They are prayer machines. So you, you share with your pastor, we share, we share with somebody things that we have already begun to do. And that takes us to the second point. Find someone to agree with in faith. Don't just load your burdens on somebody. In fact, the Bible says, cast your burdens on Jesus. Not on somebody. I can't carry your burdens. For your own information, I never died for you. Amen. Am I right to say that? Yeah. Jesus is the one that died for you. So whatever situations, burdens, problems, cast them on Jesus. For he is the one that cares for you. Amen. So find someone that you can share with and say, please, let's agree together. Because the Bible says if two people agree, then the matter is going to be established. So find somebody and say, look, I'm going through this situation. I've been praying. I've been asking God. But I want you to agree with me in this situation. And you agree with somebody. And God is going to come through for you. Begin to declare. Begin to declare positively. How much do you declare positively over your life? Because sometimes people get carried away to be so negative over themselves. Be positive. Declare positive declarations over your life. Speak positively. What is it that you are expecting God to do for your life? Begin to mention it before God. Be positive about it. Amen. Mention it before God. In, 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 in uh, Job 22 verse 28, the Bible says, You also shall decree a thing. Now, when the Bible says you also, also is very interesting there. You also shall decree a thing. It simply means somebody declared it worked for them. You also can declare and it will work for you. Amen. So declare, speak out to the Lord. Declare to the Lord, God, I'm believing you for this. God, I'm asking you to do this for me. And it's faithful. I, I, I want us to, I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what is happening. And most of the things that I've shared here, I'm sharing things that I've gone through, things that I've experienced. And I believe in that God that is able to come through for us, that is able to turn situations around, and I know that he's able to turn your situation around, whatever is happening. It, it can be as big as Singapore, but I want you to know that God is faithful. God is faithful. 
in that very situation is faithful. I want to take this time just to, for a few minutes, just to declare with you. If you feel there is stuff that is going on in your life, things are happening in your life, just come to, just come to, the, to the altar here. We're going to make some declarations quickly. And then we're going to believe God. Because it's not, it's not that we are here to remove your problems, but we are here to share. Amen. We are here to share. So I'll ask all of us to stand. And those of you that feel, I just need prayer. I just need to uh, pray. I need to agree with somebody. I'll ask you to come. And then we're going to declare ag agree together. You are there, you are saying, there is just something that is going on in my life, going through some difficult situations. I'll ask you to come. Hallelujah. Probably maybe we can sing the same song, Lord, I give you my heart. Hallelujah. By faith, I know I'm also standing here by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want us to, uh, as you are standing here, and even those of us that are standing there, I want us to just declare this. Let's just speak this 
uh, 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 purposefully and speak it from your heart and just declare to the Lord. We are so used to uh, pray with uh, somebody that is giving their lives to the Lord, but I want us to pray this prayer together. Hallelujah. Say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord I open my heart. I, open my heart. I, surrender I surrender everything. Every situation. Every situation. I, surrender to you. I surrender to you. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Dear, Lord, Dear Lord, I receive, I receive your, goodness your goodness over my life, over my, life. Over my family, over my job, over my children, in the name of Jesus. Everything done against me to spoil my joy in this year, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, grant me favor so that I can excel in my Christian walk. So that I can excel in my life. So that I can excel in my job. So that I can excel in my family. In the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, deal bountifully with me in this year. In the name of Jesus. I position myself. I position myself to receive unmerited favor over my life, over my family, over my work, over my church. In the name of Jesus, every blessing assigned to my life shall not pass me by. Every blessing that is assigned to my life shall not pass me by. In the name of Jesus, dear Lord, disgrace every power that is out there to steal the joy of my salvation. Everything that the enemy plans against me shall not succeed because in you I am more than a conqueror. In you I am a winner. In you I am a victor. In the name of Jesus. Every step I take in this year shall lead me to outstanding blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just take some minutes. Begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Lift your voice and begin to thank God. And then I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, even as my brothers and sisters are standing here, I know, mighty God, how it feels when you are going through difficulties in your life. And I pray at this very moment, oh God, that you know what they are going through as individuals. You know what is happening in their lives, oh God. At this moment, I pray that Jehovah God, may you stretch your hands of righteousness over their lives in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation, right now we speak to you situation. You have no power, you have no control over the people of God. I speak the blood of Jesus. I speak the power of God to rest upon your life, to rest upon that situation in the name of Jesus. And I declare that every door every door that has been crossed over your life. May God open your eyes to see the doors that are opening in the name of Jesus. May your life be favored. May your life be favored. May your family be favored. May you be favored in your workplace. May you be favored in your community. May you be favored everywhere you go in the name of Jesus. I pray and declare the favor of God over your life. May God favor you. May he favor your life. In the name of Jesus. Every situation I command it to leave you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare the mighty hand of God over your life. I pray in your financial difficulties. I pray that may God come through for you. May God come through for you. And I believe that there is somebody that is believing God for a job. I pray that may God release that job upon your life. In the name of Jesus. May God release that job in your life. In the name of Jesus. Because he is a faithful God. He is reliable. In the name of Jesus. I pray for financial breakthrough. 
I pray for uh, health, somebody feeling sick in their body, for somebody having challenges in their physical bodies. I pray speaking healing. I declare that may the hand of God rest upon your life. Every sickness, I command it to leave you in the name of Jesus. May the hand of God touch you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we honor you. We magnify you, oh God. As I stand here, Lord, particularly, I pray, and I want you to agree with me. I pray, Lord, for uh, 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 VFC Simba One. I pray, speaking mighty God favor, that Jehovah God, may, may you open doors for us in the community. May you open doors, mighty God, for this church, mighty God, in our neighborhoods, oh God. I pray that Jehovah God, each one of us, every member that is connected to region one and two, oh God, they will operate under that favor. Whoever they connect with, mighty God, they will have an opportunity to share Jesus. They will have an opportunity to lead people to the Lord. I pray and declare prayer but mighty God this church shall be filled up oh God in the name of Jesus because in every corner oh God we are going to reach out mighty God in favor in the name of Jesus we pray that every stubborn heart in our neighborhood in every block where we are staying that Jehovah God you will be able to touch lives you will be able to bring change you will be able to bring transformation in our, in our communities, oh God. When we go to the coffee shops, oh God, I pray that, Lord, create an opportunity for us to be friendly with the people that are saving us, oh God. Yeah, help us, Lord, to be friendly with people we meet, oh God. That, Lord, we can share, we can share with them the, the love of Christ, oh God. We appreciate, mighty God, the call that you have placed upon this church, mighty God. The call for missions, oh God. The call to go to the nations, oh God. But we pray that Jehovah God God, as we go out for missions, oh God, we will also reach out to our neighborhood, oh God. We will also reach out to the community, oh God, where we are positioned. I pray that mighty God, even these brothers and sisters that are standing here in their situations, mighty God, they will understand that Jehovah God, you have called them for a purpose, oh God. And that purpose, mighty God, as, uh, as they see miracles, as they see breakthrough, oh God, they will take the initiative to testify to somebody, to share with somebody what you have done, oh God. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, I will just ask you to just go back to your seats. Thank you. And if you are here, you are saying, I am, I am, I am not born again. I have not given my life to the Lord. But I feel, and, uh, and believe you me, I spoke about an open door. Open doors will not make sense if you do not have a relationship with God. It will only begin to make sense when you build that relationship with God. If you are there and you are saying, I just want you to pray with me. I have not surrendered my life to the Lord. I'll ask you to just come quickly. Or lift up your hand, whatever you are. I want to just surrender my heart to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to experience these this, this, uh, uh, blessings. I want to experience the goodness of God. I want to experience the love of God. If you are there and you are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, I want you to just lift up your hand, wherever you are. And I'm going to pray with you. And if you are there, you are saying, I just want to recommit myself to the Lord. I just want to come back to the Lord and just recommit myself. I've been relaxed. I've not been praying. I've not been spending time in the presence of God. I've not been studying his word. I've not been committed to, to the work of God. And you are there, you are saying, I just want to recommit myself to the Lord. I, I will also give you this opportunity to just come. Just come. And we're going to pray together. Sometimes, sometimes we are overwhelmed by things that we go through in life. We forget about uh, uh, building our relationship with God, our commitment to the Lord. If you are there and you are saying, I just want to recommit myself to the Lord, I'll ask you to just come. Then I'm going to pray with you quickly before I sit down. Are you there and you are saying, I just want to recommit myself to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I give you praise. I give you honor. I pray that mighty God, everything that has been declared, and everything that has been said, we seal it in the spirit. We pray that mighty God, you are taking us to the next level. You are taking us to the next level. We're stepping out of the edge. Yes, Lord, we pray that mighty God, things are beginning to happen in our lives. And I pray that you bless each one of us, everyone that came I speak a blessing over their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.